Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Fooler, your souls, dust, listeners, peasants, vassals, minions. Good morning. Welcome. I'm a useful idiot. And uh, today I want to go back to Syria. These are a couple stories that uh, just add to the whole uh, surreal nature of what is unfolding in uh, Iraq and uh, Syria and the so called Islamic State. But now we find out that uh, they're fueled by. Uh, energy drinks and amphetamines and uh, so this is a should be no surprise of course the use of amphetamines has a long history in the field with militaries around the world throughout history and uh, is even, even currently uh, is uh, used in the field by uh, US troops and uh, it also uh, has a, a long tradition as I mentioned methamphetamine was uh, used by uh, Japanese kamikaze pilots uh, as well as a uh, Germ uh, German Wehrmacht during World War II. Um, and of course, uh, speed is very conducive to the war environment. And uh, so let's get down to some of these gruesome details. What we're talking about here is a, a drug called Captagon. Uh, it's a, made in Syria. And it's an amphetamine that's widely used across the Middle East. In fact, there's been explosion of uh, use since 2006. 10% uh, of the probable market is uh, 55 million tablets were seized in Saudi Arabia in 2013. 55 million of these uh, amphetamine tablets and that's 10% of the probable market. So we're looking at uh, 500 million um, tablets floating around uh, just in Saudi Arabia. 12 million tablets were seized in Lebanon in 2013 and uh, this, this stuff uh, sells for upwards of $20 a tablet, depending on which market it is. So, of course, it's going to be a huge black market all across the Middle East for this stuff. And uh, sor sources such as Reuters and Time have noted that production has massively increased in Syria uh, on both sides. So not only that, uh, both sides of the Syrian conflict, uh, ISIS uh, and um, the Syrian army are both using uh, the drug and one of the reasons why they know there's been a massive increase in Syria is because 90 percent of the uh, uh, supply coming out of Lebanon has been reduced because there's so much competition and uh, the, the uh, description in this article I'll attach below says Captagon the trademark name for the synthetic stimulant phenethylene was first produced in the 1960s to treat hyperactivity, narcolepsy, and depression, but was banned in most countries by the 1980s as being too addictive. So uh, that's pretty telling right there. This drug is so addictive that even Western countries uh, were, are willing to ban it. So it must be extremely, extremely addictive. Uh, one doctor described the effects. He said that, uh, quote, typical effects are a kind of euphoria. You're talkative, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you're energetic, unquote. Uh, so once again, to think of a uh, bloodthirsty gang uh, of killers uh, all doped up on amphetamines and cutting people's heads off uh, is a scenario that's certainly not hard to imagine. Um, ironically, uh, supposedly Al-Qaeda is the least likely to use the drug because their uh, interpretation of Islam is so much more strict. So, uh, so <laughs> turns out once again the, uh, the somehow the uh, um, Al Qaeda in Syria are, are, are the good guys somehow. But uh, there's a couple other uh, interesting descriptions here too from uh, a Kurd in Kobani recently described uh, the uh, ISIS saying that quote they are filthy with straggly beards and black nails. They have lots of pills with them that they keep taking. It seems to make them more crazy, if anything. They become agitated and excited, desperate to punish even children for the smallest thing, unquote. So uh, a pretty telling uh, uh, vision of fear and loathing in Syria and Iraq. Uh, we also have another uh, uh, description from a uh, Syrian drug control officer in Holmes who said that, quote, we would beat them and they wouldn't feel the pain. Many of them would laugh when we dealt them heavy blows, unquote. So uh, not only is it uh, uh, amusing to picture an ISIS uh, strapped to a chair, hopped on uh, amphetamines, laughing his ass off while 
Syrians beat him, but uh, it's also amusing somehow to hear this drug officer uh, talk so casually about beating a prisoner. But uh, and then the odds are that uh, perhaps the uh, Syrian uh, military who are beating uh, uh, militants who are on amphetamines are also on amphetamines themselves. Uh, themselves. Um, and it seems like that might be likely. So uh turns out the figures are, are pretty surprising. In 2010, the Middle East leads the world in amphetamine seizure, um, especially um, Saudi Arabia. Um, like I mentioned earlier, 500 million uh, tablets on the market of amphetamines, 15 metric tons. And as it turns out, uh, I guess marijuana use is also uh, widespread across the Middle East. And in fact, uh, there's a huge... Uh, cannabis industry in, um, in in Lebanon. I'll also attach a story below how uh, it turns out the uh, cannabis growers in Lebanon are very fierce indeed and are protecting their fields and their crops from uh, ISIS incursions. Of course, ISIS uh, wants to destroy marijuana crops, which is what they've done in Syria. And then uh, to add to, once again, to how surreal this whole environment is across a uh, North Africa and having war and, and not only drug trafficking but massive drug use being part of the scenario uh, in Bahrain we have apparently a, a lot of heroin use in Libya of all places so imagine the, the chaos uh, that uh, Libya has descended into and in, uh, uh, fueled by uh, jihadism and a flood of uh, weapons and now uh, we have a, a epidemic of heroin use uh, just adds to the, the nightmarish world that we see unfolding in these regions. And then last but not least, uh, we, we appear, turns out that uh, ISIS has a thing uh, for Red Bull. And it's, it's no surprise that uh, you know Red Bull and a, and a big knife like this uh, just seem to go together. We get all hopped up on Red Bull and then uh, get out your knife and do the dirty work. Uh, it turns out that Turkish smugglers and the black markets between Turkey and Syria have existed for a very long time. So a lot of the um, trade we see in all kinds of things, including weapons, uh, has to do with uh, black market uh, smuggling routes that have existed uh, in that region between Iraq, Syria, and Turkey for, for a long time. And then we also have the fact that uh, a lot of Syrian business has, uh, has moved out of Syria and, and works in Turkey now because of the uh, security and safety but also that gives them a lot of ties uh, to Syria itself so uh, once again enhances and uh, expands uh, this big uh, black market in fact the first nine months of 2013 this uh, smuggling uh, between Turkey and Syria generated 1.3 billion dollars in goods but what we find out that's uh, so interesting is that uh, uh, Turkish truck driver uh, a Turkish representative from a Turkish uh, trucking company said that every day they have four or five trucks carrying nothing but Red Bull uh, to Syria uh, for ISIS. So, uh, so there we have it. What a, a an added layer of uh, strangeness, um, and somehow predictably uh, strange, but strange nonetheless that uh, we have this bloodthirsty army of. Uh, killing machines in ISIS uh, who get all hopped up on Red Bull and uh, amphetamines uh, while they're out on the battlefield. So welcome to the 21st century. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.